It's hard to imagine life in America before the invention of the automobile. The simple lifestyle afforded by the horse and buggy was quickly replaced by clunky, sputtering mechanical marvels, whisking us all into the fast lane. These days, cars in America have become more than just a way to get from A to Z. America is in love with their ride. In fact, in less than 50 years, the number of registered vehicles on America's highways grew from just over 74 million in 1960 to a staggering 256 million in 2008. That's nearly a 350% increase. And let's face it, with that many cars, there's bound to be some wrecks. Like it or not, car wrecks have become a part of our daily life. In fact, since the year 2000, there are on average more than 10 million wrecks in the U.S. every year. One every three and a half seconds. Sad but true, about a fourth of all drivers have been involved in a wreck in the last five years. And each year, about 2.5 million auto accidents result in an injury claim. That works out to about five injury claims every single minute. But despite all the statistics, we continue to drive. Most of us do so secure in the knowledge that even though these wrecks may occur, we feel that there are insurance policies in place to take care of us, cover our expenses, our medical bills, put everything back in balance if we happen to have a wreck. After all, isn't that why we have insurance in the first place? I guess you could call me a car buff. Uh, my husband likes to tinker with cars, but for me it's mostly about the style. So when Charlie decided to trade our SUV in for a convertible, I was okay with that. There are some days you uh, never forget. Charlie took the convertible out. I hopped in and uh, we went off for our first drive. God, I'll never forget it. <sighs> or what happened. Well, I haven't been in a wreck, knock on wood, but I figured if I was, then the insurance company would take care of everything. I mean, that's what they're there for, right? Well, I just assumed that they would help me with my hospital bills and with other expenses, especially if it wasn't my fault. For the amount of premiums I pay every month, they better take care of me. But do they? If something happened, would everything really be okay? Would it all be taken care of, made right, right away? We all want to think so, even assume so. Because let's face it, insurance is not a luxury. There's a reason why states require all drivers to have liability insurance. It's the law. It's something we have to have. But because it's a service required by law, the insurance companies that provide that service inherit certain responsibilities and obligations. A state Supreme Court issued this statement. The insurer's obligations are rooted in their status as purveyors of a vital service labeled quasi-public in nature. What they're really saying in legal jargon is that you should expect your insurance company to put your good in front of their good. It means insurance companies cannot put themselves and their profit as more important than you, the policyholder. But as many people have found, that's not always the case. That pickup truck came out of nowhere. As soon as it hit me, I blacked out. Woke up in a hospital. And we thought that was the low point, but we were wrong. The low point actually came later when we talked to the insurance company. I mean, me in the hospital, uh, off work for a month just scraping by to even pay the bills. And what the insurance company was offering wasn't even enough to pay my medical bills, let alone anything to, to live on or fix the car. Only a fraction of the bills? Is that in the public's best interest? What's going on here? Why not pay my medical expenses? And by the way, this accident was not our fault. Surely this is just an isolated incident, an anomaly of some kind, or is it? The truth is, something has changed. What I'm going to show you now is not only how things have changed, but when they changed. Traditionally, insurance companies operated with a 70-30 loss ratio. For every dollar you pay in premiums, 70 cents is held by insurance companies, like a bank, to pay claims. The other 30 cents went to operating expenses and profits. At least that was the general rule. But somewhere along the way, those rules changed. 
This shows the percentage amount of each premium dollar paid in claims by one of the largest insurance companies in the United States. In 1987, it was 71 cents, in line with the 70-30 rule. But by 2006, that number had dropped to 47.6 cents. In other words, about 30% of the money supposedly set aside to pay your claims was now going to expenses and profits. Something had changed. Seemingly overnight, big insurance companies changed the way they handled the payment of claims, especially smaller claims. That change was brought about by something called the McKinsey Report. In the early 1990s, the consulting firm McKinsey & Company was hired by a major insurance company to restructure their business. The resulting report changed the focus from policyholders to profits. The report says that in order for insurance companies to gain, the policyholders must lose. And now, it's a whole new ball game. Policyholders, you, you, you. Consumers, you, you, and you. You're now the losers. And who are the winners? Insurance companies, who almost immediately began posting record profits. How big have profits been for the insurance companies who put the McKinsey Report recommendations into practice? Tens of billions of dollars each year. Since the McKinsey Report was first published, insurance company profits have soared. For one company, profits increased a staggering 3,000% from 1993 to 2005. Even in 2005, the year Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf Coast, the insurance industry still posted earnings of $49 billion, up 19% over the previous year. The next year, 2006, that number doubled to $73 billion. $73 billion? Wow, that's an incredible amount of money. So that's where my premiums go. So let's see, they took from the poor policyholders and gave to the rich stockholders, like Robin Hood, in reverse. Insurance company top executives have also reaped the rewards. In the past two years, compensation for the CEOs of the top insurance companies have averaged over $10 million a year. The plan outlined in the McKenzie Report is working for the insurance companies. Wouldn't it be great to say that there is no link between the insurance company profits and aggressive claim practices? That reports of such practices have been greatly exaggerated or are isolated incidents. That would be great if it were true. But the fact is, the McKinsey report is real. And what's happening as a result of it is leaving the consumer with almost no place to turn. Almost. Now let's take a look at another report issued by that same insurance industry. According to a 2003 document from the Insurance Research Council, the majority of monies paid out to injury claims were awarded to people represented by attorneys. What does this mean? It means people represented by attorneys get most of the payments. Now, does that mean that hiring an attorney assures that you will get more than if you go it alone? Well, don't take our word on it. Let's see what the insurance industry has to say. A study by the RAND Institute shows that people who use an attorney get on average 25% more money. Further, almost all the people who use an attorney, 95%, get money for their claims. There it is. in a study by the insurance company themselves, in black and white, people that use an attorney get on average 25% more. They're making the case for you to call an attorney. It's as simple as that. Imagine the insurance industry is telling you to call a lawyer. We called the lawyer, and what a difference. They took care of everything. The money, we paid our bills, were covered for when I was out of work. The pain, it covered that too. During the time that these big insurance companies and their executives were making big money, it should come as no surprise that they were fighting tooth and nail to keep the McKenzie Report a secret. Even after countless lawsuits by attorneys, consumer groups, stockholders, even state governments, the insurance company still refused to produce the document. On at least two occasions, the insurance companies were charged with contempt of court. Finally, after years of litigation, the report was released to the public in 2008. 
By that time, however, the damage had been done. The McKenzie report had become a matter of insurance company policy. In the end, they had managed to keep this 150,000-page McKenzie report a secret for over 10 years. That's a pretty neat trick. 150,000 pages? That's a stack of papers as tall as a four-story building. I'm not the kind of guy who likes to get involved in a lawsuit. Well, at least that was till after my accident. You see, this guy runs the light. He, he T-bones me, he broke my arm. My back was hurt real bad. I, I'm still having trouble with that. But we both had insurance, so I thought it'd be as easy as one, two, three. So when the insurance company called me the very next day with a check, I thought, great, let's get this thing over with. Till I looked at the number. There was no way. That wouldn't pay for sh anything. I mean, I'm not a greedy person, uh, but this was ridiculous. And they were like, you can fight it if you want to, but there's no guarantee you're going to get more. It's like they're paying me pennies. Come on, man. Do you see what's happening here? Naturally, everyone wants to have his or her claim settled quickly, and the insurance companies know that. In fact, in the McKinsey report, they've actually calculated that 90% of people making claims will accept the initial offer, no matter how low. The insurance companies bank on it. Even while studies show that the initial offer is almost always less than 20% of what the claimant should receive, 90% still take that first offer. You'd hope that they would offer a fair settlement right up front, but maybe that's not the case. You know, it seems crazy, but I can understand it because when people need money, they're going to take that first offer. It seems to me that a lot of people are coming up short by not calling an attorney first. The McKenzie Report proposed a plan for insurance companies to redesign the way we handle claims. In order to achieve an estimated 5 to 15 percent reduction in claims paid. But the insurance companies took that even further. Some insurance companies have achieved close to a 25 percent reduction in claims paid out, money that was supposed to go to you to pay your claim. That's incredible. Now what this means is that much of their huge profits have been generated at the expense of you, the claimant. It's simple arithmetic. Pay less, keep more for the company. Okay, something's definitely wrong here. If the insurance companies are taking my money and keeping it for themselves, that's wrong. Today, insurance companies have assets totaling nearly $4 trillion. That's more than the gross domestic product of all countries on Earth, except for the U.S. and Japan. So if the insurance companies are building this enormous wealth off the 90% of claimants who take less, what happens to the other 10%? Well, for the remaining 10%, put on the boxing gloves. That's right. They'll start a fight. Are you serious? It's like they don't give you much of a choice. It's like either their way or the highway, right? And how do the insurance companies do it? Simply by adopting the McKinsey Report's one, two, three punch. Delay, deny, defend. You know, I didn't have to think about it long. I told them, no way. It was ridiculous. The amount of money the insurance company was offering wouldn't even have paid my hospital bill. And who knew how long I was going to have to have the treatment on my back? Well, that's when everything changed. That friendly insurance company who was so prompt with their first low offer, well, they disappeared. They wouldn't even return my phone calls. That was the scariest time because the bills were starting to pile up and I was sending them off to the insurance company like you're supposed to, but Nothing was happening. The clock was ticking, and I needed some answers. Delay. Delaying a claim is a very effective tactic for insurance companies. You may not be able to work. Bills will be piling up. Insurance companies know that this is when people are the most vulnerable. Deny. On top of that, the insurance companies may try to deny your claims. Your claims for health care needs may be denied because of an alleged pre-existing condition. Claims for lost wages and pain and suffering, denied. And the thing is, once your claim or part of your claim is denied, the burden of proof falls on you. You know, when the insurance company finally got in touch with me, it wasn't with answers. 
It was with questions. Questions about my medical history. Questions about the medical bills. My, my medical records. It's like they're trying to build a case right in front of me. Like they were trying to deny my claim. They were like, show me why we should pay. Show me why that's not a pre-existing condition. Where'd they come up with that? I mean, this thing was going nowhere fast. The third part of the insurance company's triple threat is defend, the threat of going to court. The insurance companies have a battery of lawyers and they know you don't want to risk going against them in court alone. Perhaps the most telling part of the McKenzie Report strategy is the recommendations concerning defending against the claim. It's easy to understand the risks of going into a court of law against a large insurance company. Often the risk is all that is necessary to frighten the claimant into an early settlement. Intimidate. That's the power of defend. When they started suggesting this thing might go to court, well, I got mad. I mean, just because I didn't take their first offer, they want to drag this whole thing out? Drag me into court? I don't want to go to court. Are you kidding me? Just me against the big insurance company? There are hundreds of lawyers? No way. So I picked up the phone, reached out for help, and called the attorney. Now I know what some of you are saying. Hey, you're picking on the insurance company, making them out to be the bad guy, when all they're trying to do is just make a living. Well, it's true, the insurance companies are made up of people just like you and me, doing their job. But what is that job? Well, according to the McKinsey Report, it's doing everything they can do to minimize the amount of money they pay out to you once you've had a wreck. Remember their mantra? Delay, deny, defend. This from the people who are supposedly putting the public interest ahead of their profits. Luckily, there is an alternative, a way to level the playing field and return the advantage to you. An individual on his or her own is going to have a hard time trying to maneuver easily through the insurance roadblocks, delay, deny, and defend. It's why so many people turn to an attorney for help. In fact, a 2003 report released by the Insurance Research Council admits the majority of monies paid out to injury claims was awarded to people represented by attorneys. It's in their own report. Another study by a major insurance company actually showed that claimants represented by attorneys averaged more than double that to people who represented themselves. Got that? Double. Great news for you. Not so good for the insurance companies. Another key element in the McKinsey Report concerns reducing the number of people who hire lawyers. They even go so far as to forecast the gains this would mean for the insurance company stock. They know. And now that the McKinsey Report has been released, it unwittingly serves as a guide to consumers about how to combat the very programs they're advocating. Now you can short circuit the whole process. It's as simple as picking up the phone. Take the insurance company's own advice and get a lawyer on your side or suffer the consequences. It worked for me. You know, I knew I didn't know my way around. This whole thing, it had turned into a war. It was like me against the world. Hey, all I wanted was a fair offer from the insurance company, but the offer they made me was ridiculous. Let me tell you, it was a whole new day once I called the lawyer. I mean, no more hassles with the insurance company. In fact, I never had to speak to him again. Not that I wanted to, but all my medical expenses were paid, my car was repaired, and I even got a little left over. And as it turned out, I needed it. The McKenzie Report. Is it a primer to insurance industry profitability? Of course. But what they say is the McKenzie Report is a guide to combat fraud. It's a very convenient line of reasoning. Think about it. Nobody is going to argue for insurance fraud so maybe we're just misinterpreting the facts. Maybe it is all about insurance fraud. The problem is, according to the insurance industry's view, we must all be insurance fraud suspects. We aren't all criminals. I don't think so, are you? Are you, are you? 
No, all we're trying to do is get a fair settlement to cover losses from an accident. But according to the insurance company's interpretation, we have to now prove we're not criminals. Why should I have to prove I'm not a criminal? Wait a minute, that's ridiculous. Whose side are these insurance companies on? It's just another example of being bullied by big business. I'm getting sick of it. Here's the truth about it. If insurance companies are reaping huge profits by using intimidation tactics on consumers, by denying and delaying the payment of legitimate claims, forcing people to settle for less than they know they're fairly entitled, even to the point of having to defend themselves in a court of law, if insurance companies are making money by doing any of these things, that's just wrong. Even with enormous profits, they still complain that they're paying too much. According to reports from their own Insurance Research Council, they say that average claimed economic losses for injury claims has grown 8% over the last five years due to skyrocketing medical costs, especially for accident victims. The thing is, most of these skyrocketing medical bills end up being paid with money that comes out of the victim's own pockets because they're not being fairly compensated by the insurance companies. Studies going back as far as the 1950s have shown that some injuries, especially head, neck, and spine injuries, have effects that can last for years. It's true. These medical bills can be just as devastating as the injuries. But the victims are the ones left holding the bag with nowhere to turn. And then you look at the billions being made by the insurance companies that are putting us through this, and that's where you have to say, enough is enough. The stories are mostly the same. One moment you're driving along minding your own business, then suddenly your world is turned upside down. You reach out to your insurance company, who you may have been paying for years, and what do they offer? Resistance. You soon discover that their main objective seems to be limiting the amount of your claim. They push for a quick settlement and employ the tactics of delay, deny, and defend, tactics that stack the deck against you. Luckily, however, there is something you can do. Hire an attorney. When you hire an attorney, you're suddenly leveling the playing field. We know their game. We know the law. And we're not afraid to go to court. Insurance companies know that, and they respect that. It's like they leave you with no other choice. These days, with all the things that you don't know and that the insurance companies do know, it just makes sense to get a lawyer on your side. There's no shame in that. There's no shame at all. That's what they're there for. That's just our job. We know the law. We know all about the insurance company's tactics. We know about the money they didn't tell you about. And we know how to get it for you. Fact. A 2003 document released by the Insurance Research Council states that the majority of monies paid out to injury claims were awarded to people represented by attorneys. Fact, the study by the RAND Institute shows that people who use an attorney get more, on average 25% more. Fact, another insurance study showed that claimants represented by an attorney average more than double the awards of those who aren't. Wow, and these are facts from studies commissioned by the insurance companies themselves. No wonder they didn't want their little secrets released to the public. The facts all add up to this. An attorney who's experienced in dealing with insurance companies knows how to get you the most money for your loss. An attorney who's experienced in the courtroom will likely be able to keep you from ever having to go to court. How many want to go to court? I didn't think so. And most importantly, an attorney will handle all the details of your case so you can concentrate getting well. We called the lawyer. What a difference. They took care of everything. The money, we paid our bills, recovered for when I was out of work. The pain, they covered that too. We got, we got a new convertible too. You know, it's a real shame because the insurance company should have just done all that in the first place. Nobody tells you that you need to call a lawyer, especially not the insurance company, but I will. I'll tell you like it is. You need help. You need to call an attorney. I did. Otherwise, you're looking at a train wreck. That's right. When you hire an attorney, you stand up for yourself. Don't let someone run over you a second time. The first wreck you couldn't avoid, but this is one you can. 
it's easy to get into the mindset that your insurance company is going to take care of you. I mean, that's what they tell you. That's what you pay them for. At least that's what I think that I'm paying them for. Face it, life's complicated, real complicated. So you need a little help. I guess we all need to look out for ourselves and our situations. So in a situation like this, if it means getting a good attorney, then do it. Delay, deny, defend. The insurance company, the very people you paid to protect you, are now fighting you. Report after report issued by the insurance industry themselves says that those who hire attorneys are more likely to get paid and receive more money than those who don't. It's time to pick up the phone and claim what's yours. What if everyone who got in a wreck today were to stand up to the insurance companies with one voice and say no? No to the quick and low first offer. No to the delay tactics meant to keep you waiting. No to the denial tactics that make you out to be the bad guy. No to having to go to court. Together with one resounding no to them might be just the thing needed to put things right and to return the insurance companies back to their original purpose. Let's level the playing field and send a loud and clear message to the insurance company. Let's stand together. Come on, let's stand. Let's stand up and tell the insurance company no. 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 And what are we going to tell our attorney? Yes. Thank you for your time and attention. I'm attorney Gary Patterson. Good night and drive carefully.